Hi guys, I'm here today to talk about um, the buckler. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many videos uh, we've had comments on along the lines of uh, why are you using a dinner plate instead of a shield, what's that useless piece of crap, that kind of thing. So clearly there's some misunderstanding about what this is because it's not a kid's shield, um, despite the fact that it might look like one. Um, so I'm talking about what the buckler is, why people use them, who use them and why we use them. Uh, so first of all, what actually is a buckler? Well, a buckler is a small shield. Um, there's no precise measurement as to exactly what classifies it, but realistically you're talking about a diameter of 9 inches um, up to about 15 or 16 maximum. And anything above that you're going to get onto actual shields like the Scottish Targe or the Rotella or something like that. So, um, so that's, this is a typical sort of example, 12 inch. There are lots of this size in museums. It's a very common size, 12 inch. Um, they can be made of a range of materials from steel to wood, leather, and a composite of uh, any number of those. Um, they tend to be round. There are some different shapes, um, but this is very, very common. They're shaped so that the hand sits slightly inside the shield itself. Um, they can have a range of features on top, such as spikes and hooks, raised bevel edges. They can be concave, um, uh, they can be convex. Uh, they can have these rings attached, even multiple rings for catching blades. Uh, so they can vary quite a bit. Um, some of those features we can't really use in fencing because they're not particularly safe. They can catch blades and break them, that kind of thing. Stuff that you'd really like if you were using them for real, but in our sparring scenarios we can't really use them. So we have to stick to a, a simple, plain buckler like this. Uh, now, as to why people use them and who use them, well, the first thing is uh, they were used on the battlefield, um, primarily as a, a sidearm. Again, it's this is the kind of thing where if you can't um, carry a main shield, you have this on your side as a sidearm. So, for example, archers, handgunners, um, that kind of thing will carry them. A range of troops that are using something else in their main hands that can then carry a sword or similar one-handed weapon and this to use in the offhand. So, really. The buckler um, is to the shield what a handgun is to a rifle. Is It's not necessarily the best uh, weapon of war, but it's easily carryable. And that's the thing about the buckler is it's portable, easy to carry on a daily basis, uh, it's lightweight, um, and, and that's its huge advantage over any kind of shield, really. Which really takes us on to one of the most significant users of the, the buckler, and that is not in warfare, but in civilian use. Um, the buckler itself, as we know it like this, is very popular from around about the 13th century up until the very late 16th and really into the 17th century as well. Um, and it was really popular with civilians uh, for self-defence. And when you think about it, again, it's portable, like the handgun, you can hang it off your belt. Another method was to tie a, a small rope. Um, to the handle and onto the pommel of your sword and then throw it over your back so it just hangs on your back like, a, like where your cloak would. So it's very very easy to carry, um, lightweight so it's not going to strain you all the time. Unlike games like you know Skyrim, people didn't walk around with shields in their daily life. Uh, they just really didn't, but they did carry small um, weapons uh, and shields for self-defense. So they'd carry a, a buckler or a parrying dagger, um, but not a sort of a shield when they wouldn't wear armor. So again, in civilian life where you're not wearing armour, you can carry a buckler and give yourself a substantial advantage in a fight over somebody who hasn't got any kind of shield or armour themselves. Um, it provides an awful lot of protection, despite how small it is. The, the way arcs of defence work, most of the systems of buckler have the buckler really extended out in front of us with a relatively straight arm. So again, the angles of defence are actually quite good and it can cover a large amount of the body. Um, so it, it covers a lot more than you might think. Now, what does it classify as? It really is just a small shield. Um, it would be fair enough to call it a small shield, but um, because it's used and carried as this sort of offhand weapon, it really does classify as something a bit different to the shield. Um, there are quite a few treaties uh, that actually look into the fencing of this, including the earliest known fencing manuscript, uh, which is held in the Leeds Armoury, the 133 or I-33 manuscript, which is approximately 1300 AD. And then there's a range of other sword and buckler stuff, other German stuff like the Glitzer, um, going up to the um, sort of Italian 16th century sources, which also look at it, and things like George Silver as well. So what would you use with this buckler? Well, almost any kind of one-handed sword you can think of. So anything from plain arming sword through to um, the, the Meza, um, falchions, rapiers, side swords, basket hilts, and back swords. 
uh, sabres as well. It's not just Europe where this was popular. If you look to, say, the Middle East, um, the Far East, it was different kinds of bucklers and different kinds of names, all very much of muchness. If you go and look at, the, say, Iranian martial arts or Indian martial arts, you'll see this kind of thing being used with curved blades, for example, an awful lot of scimitars and shamshirs. So it saw an awful lot of use, both on the battlefield um, and off it. And in fact, um, the last real user of it was for sport. Uh, up until the early 19th century, people were still commonly practicing with um, single sticks, um, basically basket hilt instead of wooden swords, and sometimes steel as well, with a buckler for sport. And um, for example, where we are based, uh, the Bristol sort of area, on Bristol Downs, still every weekend up until about 1830, 1840, you'd see uh, people getting together and actually fighting with the sort of sword and buckler as an actual sport. Um, so they weren't carrying the weapons anymore for self-defense, but purely sportive. Um, so that's probably the overall use of, um, of the buckler, sort of the users of it. It's not sort of unique to any particular class um, or any particular time. It was used with an immense range of weapons in all different kinds of scenarios. So there you go, they have the buckler. Um, easy to carry, easy to deploy, useful for the range of weapons, and particularly in scenarios where you can't wear armor or you can't be carrying a shield. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video.